much for talking about for talking about tropical geometry. And I'm going to motivate torque varieties by talking about uh, desingularization. So the setting is going to be the following, and I'm just going to scroll. If I go too fast, it's the yeah, well, um, For a field, we're going to study an algebraic variety over a field K, and if we're working classically, algebraic geometry, especially things related to cohomology, works best when X is smooth and proper. If it isn't smooth, but it is proper, then you can resolve singularities and get something smooth and proper. Um, we, in, we can at least do that in characteristic zero by Haranaka's theorem. And here just means that there's a birational morphism from a non-singular variety. That's like the weak form of resolution by singularities. Haranaka's theorem says more. Okay, so nice should be smooth and proper. What would nice mean for something that isn't proper? But let's say it's smooth. And then what would nice mean for schemes over a discrete valuation ring or for schemes over a valued field? All right, so let me first address the open variety question. So a simple, and by introducing a notion of simple normal crossings. So I'm gonna take X to be regular, that'll be our ambient space. And I'm gonna say that a divisor D is simple normal crossings if it can be written as a union of divisors such that each one of them is regular and they intersect transversely, which means locally, and I guess maybe you'll take that to mean locally analytically, or yeah, let's say locally analytically. Um, it looks like um, coordinate hyperplanes crossing. So it's cut out by the equation x1 through xk, product of x1 through xk equals zero. So if you have an open variety, the best you can hope for is, or a smooth open variety is finding a smooth proper compactification such that the complement is simple normal crossings. And this would be the notion of a nice compactification and this is possible by Haranaka and characteristic zero. It's, the proof is very similar to resolution of singularities. And example of such a thing is, and this is an example we'll come back to a lot, is if you have projective space and you remove hyperplanes. Now these are arbitrary hyperplanes. They may not, let's say they're all distinct, but they may not intersect transversely. Like a pair would, but like you could have, oh no. Yeah, but you could have many of them intersecting in too high dimension. So, so the way to take care of this and get a um, simple normal crossing compactification is to blow up the intersections. So we can start by, and I'm gonna do it as aggressively as possible. I'm gonna start by blowing up the points that occur as the intersection of hyperplanes. Then I will take the lines that occur as intersections of hyperplanes. I can't really do that because I've already changed my variety. So I'm gonna take the proper transforms of the lines, blow those up, then take the planes and so on. So I order the intersections by dimension and I iteratively blow them up. And then that will produce some new algebraic variety as my ambient space. I'll have created a bunch of exceptional divisors and then if I remove the exceptional divisors and the hyperplanes, I'll get my original variety back. And this is the so-called wonderful compactification. It's the most aggressive version of the wonderful compactification. Now for varieties over discreetly valued fields and being discreetly valued isn't that much of an imposition. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. But let's just talk about discreetly valued field. So I'm gonna let O be the valuation ring of K and pi be the uniformizer of O. And the example we should have in mind is that K is the ring of form or is the field of formal Laurent series in a indeterminate T. O is formal power series in T and T is our uniformizer. And we've got X defined over this field. And I wanna find um, a scheme defined over the DVR O. And I wanna find it and let's say X is smooth but I want to extend it in the nicest possible way. But because of reduction issues, I can't necessarily 
guarantee that the total space is going to be smooth. So the best I can hope for is that it's regular, which means I shouldn't say the, to the total space is regular, which is in some sense meaning it's smooth, but the map down to the base isn't necessarily smooth. So the best I can hope for is that the total space is a regular scheme, that its fiber over the generic point is my original variety. And if I consider my morphism down to O, and I really mean spec O here, um, I look at the pre-image of the close point, which is cut out by the uniformizer pi, and I want that to be a simple normal crossings divisor so that locally the situation looks like this, x1 times x2 up to xk is equal to pi. And the example you should have in mind is if you're studying curves, we have the formation of a node. So the equation is locally is x1 times x2 is equal to pi. So for pi not zero, we've got this situation, which is nice and not singular. For pi, we have two lines crossing in a node. And the example we should have in mind is that spec k is a punctured disk and spec o is a disk. So we're filling in the fiber where pi is equal to zero. And this is formally true for that example field, and it can be made literally true by choosing our DVRO to be the ring of germs of an analytic function in a neighborhood of the origin, where the valuation is vanishing order at the origin. So the idea is we're filling in the fiber over the origin, allowing the mildest pop of possible singularities. And this is possible in characteristic zero, given a smooth X by the Toriadal and Bedding's work of, uh, help me, Kempf, Knudsen, Mumford, and Sandonat. And it uses some interesting, subtle combinatorics that I'm gonna try saying as little as possible about. All right, so when we talk about tropicalization, we're gonna try to talk about um, varieties in K star to the N in an algebraic torus. So this just means the units in this field to the nth as our ambient space. And we're gonna look for compactifications and extensions to O. So we're doing both steps in this process that have nice properties. And under, under conditions on our original variety, it will inherit the compactification and the generation will inherit nice properties through torque varieties. All right, so I'm going to review torque varieties. Everything I say is 100% standard. So if you need, if you want to zone out for the next 10 minutes, that's cool. And it's just coming straight out of Fulton. You could also look at um, Cox Little Shank. So I'm going to fix a lattice, which is going to be z to the n. I'm going to call it m. I'm going to let n be the dual lattice. And I'm going to tensor both of those guys with R, which will be denoted by subscript R. And torque varieties are built out of combinatorial objects called fans, which in turn are made up of strongly convex rational polyhedral cones. So the cones are going to live in N. And it's just the non-negative span of a set of vectors. And here, um, strongly. Um, convex means that it doesn't contain any line through the origin, and rational means that the vectors are lattice vectors they're taking the span of. And once I have a cone, I can define supporting hyperplanes. So those are hyperplanes, I guess I would say they're where you've got a direct uh, a choice of normal vector, choice of normal direction, so that all of sigma lies on one side of the hyperplane. In other words, for all V and sigma, U, the normal vector dotted with V, is non-negative. And for cone sigma, the set of, or sorry, uh, got ahead of myself. A face of a cone sigma is the, is a set of the form sigma intersect H for a supporting hyperplane H. So, 
In other words, if I were to take in either any of these supporting hyperplanes that I drew and I intersect with this cone, I get this face, this face, and the vertex. And then a fan is going to be a set of strongly convex rational cones such that each face of a cone is also in delta, is also a cone of delta, and the intersection of two cones is a face of each. And I'll just draw pictures in the plane because I'm lazy. So here would be an example of such a thing. And we're going to define a correspondence that given a strongly convex rational polyhedral cone, it gives something called an affine torque variety. And then given a fan, we're going to glue. So a fan is made up of these cones. I'm going to glue the associated affine torque varieties together to get a general, genuine torque variety. All right, I'm going psychotically fast. So please, someone stop me if you need to. OK. And then the dual cone of a cone sigma is the set of all supporting hyperplanes. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at all the norm, all possible normal vectors to hyperplanes to, or all possible normal vectors to supporting hyperplanes. So it's a set of all vectors u such that u dotted with every vector in sigma is non-negative. And here is a standard picture. Here is a cone spanned by one zero and one two. Here is its normal cone, which is actually easy to draw because we're in the plane. And the cone lives in N. The normal cone lives in M. And then I'm going to produce the coordinate algebra for the affine torque variety by looking at the lattice points in the dual cone sigma or the dual cone two sigma. So I look at the lattice points and then I form the semi-group algebra. So it's like a group ring or group algebra, except only for semi-groups. So elements of the semi-group algebra are finite formal sums of the form here. This is some element of my base field. And then some element representing a lattice point. So M is a lattice point. I write chi to the M. This you should think of as a formal variable corresponding to M, but just so I can write things multiplicatively, I'm thinking about this as the exponent of M. And I impose the condition that chi to the M times chi to the M prime is equal to chi to the M plus M prime. All right, and by, by standard facts in polyhedral geometry, the dual cone intersected with the lattice points is always finitely generated as a semi-group of M. So this semi-group algebra is always a finitely generated algebra and the associated torque variety is defined to be spec of it. So let me give you an example. Now I'll give you that example from before. Here was my normal cone. I look at the lattice points and I notice that the lattice points actually need three generators. I'm gonna take um, elements along the rays. So this guy, the point zero one along this ray, the point two comma negative one along that ray, but that doesn't get me the entire semi-group algebra or that doesn't get me the entire semi-group because if I were to draw the fundamental parallelogram of those two lattice points, I notice that it has a point in the interior, so I include that. And then by translating around, I see I get every lattice point. So um, the guy I included was F, then I notice the relation is E plus G is equal to two F. And then I just elevate these guys to generators of my semigroup algebra. So I call them X, Y, and Z. And then I rewrite this relation in the semigroup as a multiplicative relation among the variables. So here, uh, E corresponds to X, G corresponds to Z. So really I'm just encoding X, Z equals Y squared. 
and this is your standard quadricone. Happens to be singular, and the singularity actually comes from the fact that I needed that there was this interior lattice point. I'll tell you about that in a sec. All right, everyone, cool. We'll, we'll get to some newer stuff in a sec. All right, so the easiest possible example, and one you should have in mind, is if I, my cone is just a quadrant, then it's, gen, and then it's dual cone is that same quadrant in the dual space. It really does have two generators. So the affine toric variety is um, the affine plane. All right, and let's do an even easier example. If sigma is, if the cone is just a ray in the plane, sigma dual is a half space. And this guy is, its corresponding semigroup is generated by this vector, this vector, and this vector. So one going to the right, one going up, one going down. And if you were to encode it, you know the one going up is the one going down, those sum to zero. So that means when I write it exponentially, the corresponding variable times it identifies the up variable and the down variable as inverses to one another. So I've got k join x, y, and y inverse. And then spec of it is an affine line crossed with an algebraic torus or a multiplicative group. And I'm going to be pretentious here. It's fine right now to think about things to find over C. So when I write the affine line, I think C, and this means the multiplicative group. So you should think C star, just the schemey way of writing it. Likewise, if I had this cone here, I have, I get the same guy with the factors reversed. And then the easiest possible example is if my cone is just the origin, then it's dual is all of the plane. Then I get variables x, x inverse, y, and y inverse. And then spec of it is the multiplicative group cross itself. All right, and in a fine torque variety that arises in this way is smooth if and only if the cone is the span of a subset of an integer basis for the lattice, meaning I have some vectors in the lattice that I can extend them to a basis. I take their non-negative span and that's my cone. And a cone of this form is called a smooth cone. And the examples you should have in mind are these. If you have a smooth cone, you really do get a fine space crossed with multiplicative tori. Now, cones can be much worse than this. They could be the span of nonlinearly independent vectors. Um, in the case where the vectors are linearly independent, the affine torque variety has mildish singularities. These are orbifold singularities. That is the cross. Um, in a fine group, in, um, in a product of a fine space in a multiplicative group quotient by a finite group. All right, just bear with me a little bit longer. Each affine torque variety has a natural action of the multiplicative group. It's induced from the multiplicative action or the group structure on spec of Km. This is Gm to the n. So this guy acts on my torque variety. You should think of it as just translating coordinates by multiplication. And then um, a subcone induces an open subset. So if, and let's just think about this for a sec. If tau is a subcone of sigma, the dual of tau contains a dual of sigma. And that in turn induces an inclusion of group rings, which induces a morphism going the other way on spec. And 
things are even better if tau is a face of sigma, this inclusion is the inclusion of a principal open, meaning it's the complement of the zero locus of a single function. All right, so with, with these inclusions in mind, I can glue a fine torque varieties together to get a torque variety. So if I have a fan delta, I form a fine torque varieties, u sigma for each cone, and then I glue according to the inclusions. So I take the disjoint union of the u sigmas and I quotient by an equivalence relation where if I have a tau as a cone of each of them, I glue u tau, the copy of u tau and u sigma one to the copy of u tau and u sigma two. And this is the nicest possible gluing. Has to be checked, but this turns out to be a separated scheme. The, the torus action globalizes. So like everything in sight agrees. So I get my torus acting on my torque variety. And my torque variety is proper if I, when I take the union of all the cones, I get my ambience, I get my, my vector space N. Here, bars delta means the support of the fan delta. And the torque variety is smooth. If every, fan, if every cone of delta is smooth. All right, and at a tropical geometry conference or in any tropical geometry talk, someone has to draw the tropical line within the first 20 minutes of their talk. Here we go, here is the tropical line, but really it's the torque variety. It's the fan. consisting of three cones um, where there are pairwise spans of the vectors one, zero, zero, one, and negative one, negative one. And if I glue those together, I get a copy of P2. And that makes sense, because what I'm really doing is I'm gluing together um, three copies of A2. Those turn out to be the complement of coordinate lines in P2. If I have this guy, this is P2 blown up at a point. Here are three examples in the line. Here is a copy of a one-dimensional algebraic torus. Here is the affine line. Here is the projective line. All right, and I can define morphisms between torque varieties. So if I have a fan delta one and some vector space N one, a fan delta two and some vector space N two, and I have a linear map of the vector spaces such that it takes every cone of delta one to the inside of some cone of delta two. In other words, it's the pointwise image of sigma is contained in a cone of delta two that induces a morphism of torque varieties. And the example you should have in mind is if delta one and delta two are, are fans in the same ambient vector space and each cone of delta one is contained in a cone of delta two, then this inclusion induces a morphism of this torque variety to that one. And when this situation happens, we say delta one refines delta two because it's like this picture, this guy refines that guy. And then the morphism between them would be the blowdown map from this torque variety to that. All right, and here resolution of singularities is really easy. For any fan delta, there's a refinement of the fan such that each cone is smooth. So this gives a resolution of singularities of the torque variety. All right, a little bit more of torque varieties. I wanna talk about torus orbits. So these are, are closed torus orbits. I'm gonna talk about certain torus invariant subschemes. So if I have a cone tau in my fan delta, I'm gonna define a subscheme associated to it. I'm gonna take 
n tau, the span of this tau. And for every cone containing tau, I'm going to quotient by n tau. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add n tau to it and quotient by n tau. So it's, I'll draw a picture. This is really picking out a link of the cone. And then I can form the fan consisting of these quotients. It lives in the quotient vector space. This turns out to be a fan and has a torque variety. And I can write it as V tau, tau and it includes as a sub variety. And the way this happens is that locally it's induced by a quotient. So what I'm really doing is I'm projecting out um, the tau directions. And this turns out to be invariant. And if you stare at this long enough, like in the example of P2, um, so associated to each ray is a P1, associated to each cone is a point, and associated to the origin is all of P2. So I guess the picture you should have in mind is if I were to say, take this ray, um, I'm looking at the torque variety that looks like this. So I'm locally, imagine myself at a point here and I look, I can go up into this guy and down to that one. And these P1s are just the coordinate lines and then the points are the torus invariant points. And notice that this is inclusion reversing and dimension reversing a cone of co-dimension D corresponds to an invariant sub variety of dimension D. All right. And these guys arise as closed torus orbits, so closure of orbits. And all right, everything I said can be done over the integers. All right, all right, time for everyone to wake up. So let's talk about the same story over a valued field. And here or over a DVR, and I'm gonna use ideas of, that come from the Toroidal Embeddings book and also a paper of Nishino and Siebert, and they were summarized in an old paper of mine with David Helm. So I wanna talk about torque schemes that will live over spec of this ring. And instead of having a vector space N, I'm gonna study an upper half space. So I'm gonna look at N plus one dimensional space where the last coordinate is non-negative. I'm gonna let delta be a fan contained in this upper half space. And I'm gonna look at the projection onto the last coordinate. And now you'll notice that if I take any cone in this upper half space and I project down, its image is to one dimensional space, its image is either a point or a ray. So I'm gonna to try to come up with a morphism of torque varieties out of this projection. So let's look inside of R and let's look at the fan consisting of this point in the ray in the positive direction. The corresponding torque variety of this fan is a fine space. So what I have is a map from my torque variety down to a fine space. And I'm gonna treat a fine space as, and this is all over the integers, I'm gonna treat a fine space as Z adjoin X. And I'm gonna define a map into my evaluation ring by taking the intermittent X to my uniformizer. And on specs that induces an inclusion of spec of the DVR into A1. And then I'm gonna form my torque scheme by just base changing. So I have this picture of a disc, of a family over a disc. And really 
where this is what this is coming from is an inclusion of the disc into the affine line and taking the fiber or the restriction of the family to this disc. At least that's how I see it. All right, everyone happy ish? All right, so let me give you an example. If I have, say, this torque variety, so this is um, the upper half space divided into four cones. Now, if I ha just had this, that would be like P1 crossed with A1. And, but because I've subdivided it, each, sub, each additional ray corresponds to a blow up. So this is P1 cross A1 blown up at two points. Now, the blow ups correspond to these rays. And these rays map down to this ray in the fan giving me A1. And in the correspondence between cones, and uh, torus orbits, this ray corresponds to the origin. So that means I've blown up two points in the fiber over the origin. Okay, so if we were to look at this, um, this torque scheme, it's generic fiber. You're not gonna see those blow ups. So, like generic, so it corresponds to P1 cross A1. And then over any, over K, I view that as the generic fiber. So it's really doing is it's seeing what maps down to a point that isn't the origin generically. So that corresponds to P1. So the generic fiber is P1. Then the closed fiber that comes from the origin. And here, let me set some notation. I'm going to let K be the residue field of O. So O quotient, the ideal generated by the uniformizer. And then I'm going to say the closed fiber is the base change to spec K. But that factors through taking the fiber over the origin. So what I end up having is, is the, what I pick up is the close fiber of this family. Now I got the family by taking P1 cross A1 and blowing up two points in the, in the close fiber. So originally I had P1, but I blew up two points in the close fiber in that, so that grows two new P1s. So it's like I have a chain of P1s, although I should be shot for drawing that picture. You should really draw a half dimensional picture because if you draw, because this picture is misleading, it makes it look like these spheres are tangent to each other. Really, they're transverse. And so we're, if you're already meeting a normal crossings divisor. All right, now it's kind of hard to think in terms of this language, certainly in higher dimensions, it would be hard. So what an easier way to see this is to take a line at height one and intersect it with our fan. And this is, for this particular fan, this captures all the data of the fan. And what you'll see is three points, two, two um, closed segments in two rays. Right. And this is an example of a rational polyhedral complex. So here, we're gonna, instead of building things out of cones, we're gonna build things out of convex rational polyhedra. So here, a rational polyhedron is cut out by rational hyperplanes. So 
It's the fine intersect. It's the fine intersection of rational half spaces. So, your this example is actually. Uh, I think it's it's just a baby case of the Mumford degeneration, right? Of course it is. Yeah, I'm just explaining what's in KKMS. Yeah, of course. Because eventually we're gonna work with tropical um, sub schemes of K star to the end that are gonna be inheriting properties of this, of the ambient torque space, torque variety. All right, and then convex, every fate, so a uh, polyhedral complex, you've got just a collection of convex rational polyhedra, every face, of a polyhedron of P, P of sigma is in sigma. And if I intersect two rational polyhedra, um, I get a face of each. All right, now I would like to work with this picture instead of that picture. It's easier for me to draw these, to draw a polyhedral complex in one dimension smaller. All right, so how do I do that? I'm gonna call my polyhedral complex sigma, and it, it's going to live in n, and here n is going to be n-dimensional. It's going to be a, um, an n-dimensional vector space, not a half space. And what I can do is, given sigma, I can take the cone over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this guy at height one and take the cone over it and then close each cone up. So in other words, what I do is I take this cone. So that really is the cone over um, P placed at height one. And then I take its topological closure. And then, but when I do that for some of these cones, um, like if I would, if I were to take say this cone here, it's unbounded. And so when I take the cone over it, or, um, I will end up getting something that intersects the boundary half space in a line or an array. So I need to include the bound to get up, to have any hope of getting a fan, I'm gonna need to include the, the new boundary guys. The new, I'm gonna need to introduce some new cones that occur from intersecting the cones over with the half plane or with the hyperplane. So I'm gonna look at sigma p comma zero, which is this cone intersected with n cross zero. And then I form a fan sigma tilde of all cones of this form. This would be the cone over the complex sigma. If my original polyhedral complex is complete, in other words, its support is all of n, then I will get a fan. I will get a fan by taking the cone over. And this actually turns out to be non-trivial. In fact, um, it's a theorem of borgos Gil and, so and Martin and Sombra um, in response to an error in one of my, in my paper with David. Like I think the, the error occurred before the paper was published, but it was an error in a draft of it. All right, so. So now we have a recipe from going from a polyhedral complex to a torque scheme. We, we form the cone over, that's a fan. We take the associated torque varieties and then we, we base change to my DVR. And now if I want a description of the generic fiber, meaning if I were to fiber product it with spec of K, what I get is what happens to, to my, my polyhedral complex when I look really far away. So I basically look at all the cones that occur when I intersect with my hyperplane, this is in the cone over construction. 
But really what it is, is I take my original polyhedral complex and I look at it from far away. So if I were to look at the sky from really, really far away, I wouldn't see this segment or this segment. I would just see these rays. And then these guys would, everything finite here would collapse to a single point. So if I looked at this from far away, I would just see this, which is good because the generic fiber here is P1. And it's actually non-trivial also that this, that this forms a fan. Everything is fine as long as you're complete. I can't remember the conditions if you're not complete. All right, so the generic fiber is the torque variety associated to the recession fan. If my original polyhedral complex is integral, which means the vertices of each polytope of P, if all the vertices of the polyhedral complex lie in my lattice N, then the closed fiber is reduced. And similarly, there is, um, you can define torus invariant subspaces. Every polyhedron in sigma corresponds to a closed torus orbit of the closed fiber, meaning the fiber over the origin, or what I get from base changing to spec of the residue field. So here, here's an example that you might meet in, in, um, tropical geometry, I might get this fan and here, if I were to, I would see that there'd be four components in the closed fiber corresponding to these vertices. And locally, the situation around any of them, it looks like P2, it looks like the fan of P2 up to a SL2Z action. So this looks like four P2s joined along lines, although here we've got some nastiness because these four P2s intersect in the point corresponding to this square. So it's a non-transversal intersection. So that, that's what the closed fiber looks like. And then the, oh, these rays correspond to where my, these correspond to the bits we added on to compactify. Like, cause you started with K star squared here and then we compactify by adding some extra torus orbits. And we can see that by looking at the recession fan which is picking out the infinite guys. And this is the torque variety of some surface. And that's what the generic fiber is. So we've got some torque variety degenerating into four P2s. All right, everyone happy? Went through this a lot faster than I thought I would be. Okay, and now this is not normal crossings because of this nasty noun transversality here. But what we'd like to do is subdivide this so that, that's not what I wanna do. What, I, what I'd like to do is subdivide this guy so that I do get normal crossings, I guess. So in other words, in this case for surfaces, it would be like three guys meeting at a point and that locally the situation is that, that the vectors along these rays form a basis or a subset uh, of a basis. Uh, can you say again why it isn't normal crossing? Because the question is sure. about- Sure, so we have that, so we, like according to the correspondence, the closed fiber, the components of the closed fiber are four copies of P2. But if we look at this, um, this square, it contains those four P2s as vertices. So by the correspondence, that means those four P2s have to intersect at a point. So we've got four varieties, so generically four varieties 
four divisors in a surface should not intersect in a point. So, and actually, I, I guess I should be thinking about this in the, in the family. I should be looking at this as the family over disk. So in the total, like, so I really should think about this as like um, X sigma before I base change, this is a threefold. And then I've got divisors that are stuck in the closed fiber corresponding to these vertices, which become raised in the cone over construction. And then there'd be a cone um, corresponding to the cone over the square that is not even simplicial. It's certainly not smooth because it's, it can only be written as a span of at least four vectors corresponding to these vertices. All right, are we cool? All right, and so, so can you get something simple normal crossings? And the answer is yes, after I rescale. So there are issues coming from the condition that you get a basis of, that you get a basis of N. So we need a little bit of flexibility. So what the theorem says, and this is actually a pretty difficult theorem of, um, from the toroidal embeddings book, although it's been simplified by, um, by what's his name, Gaku, uh, Kriyamata Prasitu, Gaku Lu, and Temkin. Hopefully I got the right one, the right brother. It's actually kind of cool that combinatorics can be that hard. All right, and the theorem is if I have a complete rational polyhedral complex sigma, then there exists some integer D so that when I rescale D sigma by D, meaning I just multiply every point by D, there's a subdivision sigma prime such that the generic fiber of my torque scheme is smooth and the, and the and then the torque variety like that the that the closed fiber is simple normal crossing it's actually better than that you get something that's semi-stable you get a semi-stable degeneration and then it's um an observation that if the recession fan is already smooth. I can do this in a way that I don't have to change the recession fan. So I'm really only changing things in the closed fiber. And what, um, what doing, what replacing sigma by D sigma is, it's, it's doing a ramified base change. So I'm replacing O by O adjoined pi the one over D. And you always, when you write down semi-stable reductions, you always have to do that type of base change. So that's to be expected. So this is probably the best possible theorem you can get. All right, and next talk, we're gonna finish this a little early, um, but next talk, we're gonna talk about tropicalization. And eventually we're gonna work our way towards I'm talking about Shin subvarieties. So those are going to be subvarieties of an algebraic torus, so that when I compactify the algebraic torus and close it up over the DVR, um, um, X ends up being transverse to the new torque variety. So the singularity structure of the torque variety is inherited by X. And that and that's a, gonna mean that X is semi-stable or it has a good uh, some normal crossings compactification. And that will let us use some tools that I'll discuss to compute its cohomology. And this is, all, this is very much the prehistory of tropical homology. All right, so um, thank you.
<laughs> Are there any questions at this point? So is the notes gonna be available later on? Uh, yeah, I just emailed them. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, the, the notes are actually already on the website of the school. There are links below the description of the course. Any, any more questions? Okay, so we have half an hour break. I'm uh, going to leave this uh, session open. So, um, yeah, if, you can stay <laughs> if you want um, until the next talk starts. Next talk is going to be uh, <clears throat> half past with Chris Shaw. Uh, yeah, continuing to talk about stroke cohomology. All right, so I'm around question.